Okay, so in this problem we're told a rock is dropped from a sea cliff and the sound of it striking the ocean is heard 3.4 seconds later. If the speed of sound is 340 meters per second, how high is the cliff? So what we have here is this guy and he's going to be dropping this uh, rock and it's going to go down and it's going to hit this ocean. And we know the time from him dropping it going down, hitting the ocean, and then the sound traveling back up is going to take a total of 3.4 seconds. Uh, and then what we're trying to find is uh, delta y, or basically the change in this height here or how high the cliff is. So that's what we're trying to find. And the way we're going to do this is by using uh, the formulas for delta y for both the speed of sound traveling this way and also for the rock falling this way. So first let's try and understand uh, delta y in terms of the context of it traveling upwards. So uh, if we imagine uh, t is going to be 3.4 seconds, which is the time it goes from this down here up to this, right? So time it takes to travel here and then the sound to travel back up. And so what I'm going to say, so I wrote t equals 3.4, but what I'm going to actually call t, so I'm going to call this uppercase t actually, and I'm going to denote t as the amount of time Right, so t, just when I think of t, or when I write t, just know it's the amount of time it takes for it to just travel downwards. Okay, and then capital T would be the total time it takes for it to go downwards and upwards. Okay, so when we try and say this, delta y equals, so what would be the time it would take, or what would delta y be equal to in terms of the speed of sound traveling upwards? So if we wanted to write that, delta y, so we know distance equals velocity times time, okay? And so delta y is going to be the distance it's traveling. So we need the velocity, which is the speed of sound in this context first, which is 340, times the time. So we want to get it in terms of the variable t. So as I said, t was the time it take it just to fall down. So what would that be? So uh, for it to fall down, right, or for delta y, the way we could find it is by doing 3.4 minus t. And so the way this works is 3.4 is the total time this takes. Okay, so the total time it takes for me to go here, up to here, right? The total uh, traveling time, right? Because he has to hear the sound too. But if we subtract t, which I denoted t is just the time it takes for it to go down, the difference between the two would just be the time it takes for it to go up, right? And if we multiply that by 340, that gives us d or the distance delta y here. Because we have the velocity going up and then the time going up is just the total time for it to do this minus the time for it to just go down. And then that would give us just this, right? So that's going to be delta y for the sound. Uh, and then now we want to do delta y, but in terms of the rock just falling. So we're basically trying to find delta y, but in terms of it going down. So this one was going up, and now we want to do it going down. So how do we do this one? So this one's going to be used based on the kinematic formula v sub 0 times t plus 1 half a t squared. Okay, so if we want it in terms of just the rock falling, uh, keep in mind, uh, v sub 0 is 0 because it starts from rest. So the initial velocity is 0. So this would just be delta y equals 1 half a t squared. And keep in mind, we can leave t since t, we said, was the time for it just to go down. So that's what we're using t here. Versus this one, we had to subtract t because we wanted just the component going up. But this one, we're wanting the component going down. So t actually works. And so we have it right here. Delta y is equal to 1 half at squared. And so keep in mind, these delta y's are the same value. So what we can actually do is 340 minus 3.4 minus t equals 1 half at squared. We're just setting both formulas equal to for delta y so we can solve for the t. Because the t is what we want to find. Because if we can get the t or the time it takes for it to fall, we can actually solve uh, for what they want us to find, which is actually delta y, right? All we would have to do is just plug it in. So we need t. And so the, this is the main takeaway from the problem is when you're given a problem like this, uh, you can set the distances equal to each other in terms of a variable, in this case t, and then we just solve. So this one we use the delta y on the way up, right, in terms of sound, right? So 340 minus 3.4 minus t. And then this one we just base on the rock going downwards. But they're the same value because delta y is the same here. It's just the length of the, or the height of the cliff. And so now what we want to do is just solve uh, it for t. So the way we would do this is multiplying by 340. So let me go ahead and do this. So 340 times 3.4 is 
uh, 1156 minus, and then it would be minus 340t. And this is going to be equal to 1 half a. a is the acceleration due to gravity, uh, which is just 9.8. So this is 4.9t squared. And then uh, just we want it to get it in quadratic form to actually be able to solve. So moving this to the other side, 0 equals 4.9t squared plus 340t minus 1156. And so now we just need to solve for t. So uh, you can use the quadratic formula to solve for this, uh, or you can just uh, plug in your calculator like I'm going to do if you have a TI-84 or something like that, just a graphing one. Um, and yeah, so I just plug it in, uh, graph it, and I'm going to see where it crosses zero. And so what you're going to find, let me zoom out one second. Let me zoom out. Sorry about that. And so when you zoom out, you'll find two values. One's going to be positive and one's going to be negative. Um, and so you're trying to find where it crosses zero. That's what these equations are for. And what you're going to find is it equals 3.2479. So just about 3.25. Uh, and it's going to be seconds. And so keep in mind, the other value is negative. I don't know what it is. Um, the other value is negative, so you can't have negative time, so it doesn't make sense. Uh, so this is the actual value. And so this is your t. And now what we can do is we have t, so it's just really a matter of plugging it into one of these formulas. Uh, I'm going to choose this one right here just because I think it's easier. So 340 and then 3.4 minus t. So as I said before, t is 3.25. So you have 340. And so keep in mind, I rounded that value, so it's going to be a little off, but basically it should be pretty close. Um, so 340 times 3.4 minus 3.25, you're going to get that it equals 51, I believe. Yeah. So you're going to get that it equals 50, 51. So it's going to be equal to 51 meters. Let me actually try it with a more exact value. So 3.4 minus, and I'll use the exact value that I got from, or not the exact, but 3.2479, and then multiply by 340. Yeah, so you actually get, since this is such a big difference, just rounding it off like that, it's going to be about 51. But when I did it the second time, I got 51.714. So it's, I'll just round it to 52 instead. So just keep in mind that this actually made a big difference rounding it. So if you want to get a more exact value, you can um, just use uh, whatever value you get solving for it. But it's going to be about 51, 52 meters. Uh, but yeah, so the height here is 52 meters. And so just keep in mind how we solve this. Uh, you basically just get the delta y's and set them equal to each other to solve for the time. And then you just plug the time back in to actually solve for it. So this is going to be kind of tricky. Uh, but as long as you remember these tricks where you can set the delta y equal to each other in solver t, or just any variable in that matter, it does make it a lot easier. So just keep in mind uh, how you would solve for delta y in terms of going down and then up. But yeah, so hopefully that made sense. Uh, your answer is going to be 52 meters, and uh, hopefully you found this video helpful.